the U.S. recession is here, and it's getting worse. The cries for a recession are increasingly louder on Wall Street, but the recession has already arrived for a significant portion of the families and businesses that make up the global economy, as the Federal Reserve, the country's central bank, remains bullish in fighting high inflation and officials increasingly discuss the need to enforce some economic pain to get price pressures under control. Several economists have said that the United States is starting to face increasing anxieties of a recession. While economic experts argue about whether or not the United States is on the verge of entering a recession, Americans are already preparing themselves for one. The stock market fell sharply on October 13 after the release of September's Consumer Price Index or CPI report, which showed inflation remaining persistently high despite the Federal Reserve's continuous efforts to tamp it down. Today's report initially sent the market spiraling down because it likely means that the Fed will continue to aggressively raise interest rates at its next meeting from November 1 to 2. Getting inflation down will mean discomfort for the economy, and for investors who are concerned higher borrowing costs will cut into corporate profits and lead to lower stock prices. Hello again everybody, if this is not your first time here, let me say hello and welcome to Finance Bureau, your reference manual for all things crypto and finance related. I'm glad you could make it. This video will talk about the looming US recession and why it's going to be worse. So what do you as an American should do? We will discuss all of that here. So sit right back and let's dive right in, shall we? The decline in economic activity we saw in the first three months of 2022 was measured by the gross domestic product. According to statistics from the government that is expected to be released in July, it also decreased during the second quarter. A fall of this scale over the course of two consecutive quarters would fulfill a typical, although unofficial, criteria of a recession. The majority of economists are still of the opinion that the United States does not fulfill the formal definition definition of a recession. This definition is derived from a more comprehensive group of data, including income, expenditure, and employment growth measures. However, compared to how convinced they were a few weeks earlier, they aren't nearly as confident now. The housing market has slowed down significantly. Income and expenditure are failing to keep pace with inflation, and a carefully monitored measure of layoffs has started to creep up. All of these factors are contributing to the state of the U.S. economy right now. The National Bureau of Economic Research is regarded as the unofficial authority on determining the beginning and ending dates of recessions in the United States. Because the committee strives to be definitive, it customarily waits for up to a year before announcing that a recession has started. This is even though the vast majority of economists working independently have already arrived at the same conclusion. To put it another way, even if we are now in a recession, we may not know it until next year, or at the very least, we may not have official confirmation of it until the following year. Economists are in consensus now that there is an increased likelihood of a recession. The Federal Reserve is quickly growing interest rates in an effort to control inflation. This move, which has already caused significant drops in the stock market, as well as a sharp decrease in the number of homes being built and sold, has already contributed to inflation. The increases in the cost of borrowing will almost certainly result in a slowdown in consumer spending, a reduction in investment by companies, and ultimately, a slowdown in hiring and an increase in layoffs. These are telltale signs of an economic recession. The S&P 500, the cornerstone of many stock portfolios and retirement accounts, peaked in early January and has dropped nearly 21% over the past six months. On October 13, the stock market saw a significant decline after the release of the Consumer Price Index data for September. The report revealed that inflation remained stubbornly high despite the Federal Reserve's ongoing attempts to bring it down. At first, today's announcement threw the market into a tailspin since it indicates that most likely the Federal Reserve will keep rapidly raising interest rates at its next meeting, which will take place from November 1 to November 2. Bringing down inflation would cause pain for the economy, as well as for investors who are worried that increased borrowing rates will reduce corporate earnings and cause stock prices to fall. 
Can you already feel the signs of a recession? Do you think we are already in one right now? What do you think? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Moving on, investors who previously believed that the recent spike in inflation would only last a few years are now becoming more concerned about how much longer the pressures will continue. This resulted in a sharp increase in the yield on 10-year notes during the month of August, which shook growth shares and disrupted the stock market's 7th trillion comeback that had begun in the early summer. The Federal Reserve is expected to continue increasing interest rates throughout the final few months of 2022. And last September is historically the month of the year when stock prices performed the worst. As a result, Wall Street is on edge as it prepares to enter these grueling last few months of 2022. Are we now undergoing a recession? Not at this time. Are we going to be in one? According to Joel Prakin, chief economist for the United States at S&P Global Market Intelligence, it is a high risk. However, the economy of the United States still benefits from significant pillars of strength. There is a low rate of unemployment, a considerable increase in available jobs, and as a whole, people have a substantial amount of money saved up and relatively little debt. So what is a recession? The current state of the economy has given the American people a terrible feeling. One that is, at least according to specific metrics, worse than how they felt at the height of the pandemic-related layoffs in the spring of 2020. It is not difficult to see why. The ever-increasing prices of food, gas, and other necessities reduce people's quality of life. When adjusted for inflation, early wages are now witnessing their most rapid decline in many decades. However, the word recession used by economists refer to more than simply a period of unfortunate conditions in general. A recession is a period during which the oversize of the economy shrinks. The National Bureau of Economic Research defines a recession as a significant decline in economic activity that is spread across the economy and that lasts more than a few months. What that means is that the downturn can be isolated to one or two sectors like housing or technology, and it has to be severe and long. Although there is some wiggle room, the decline in economic activity during the last few months of the pandemic was so widespread and severe that the Bureau classified it as a recession, even though it lasted for just two months. It might be difficult to determine whether or not a recession is currently taking place in real time, since analysts often disagree. However, this is something that is often only obvious in retrospect, which is why the committee waits such a long time before making their decisions. Should we be worried about the recession? Well, both yes and no. There is no cause for investors to get anxious, even if there is a possibility that the United States may enter a recession later this year or in 2023. To begin, the length of time a recession typically lasts is, historically speaking, relatively short. Since World War II, the average length of a US recession has been about 11.1 months, and the recession that began in early 2020 and lasted just two months was the COVID-19 downturn. Recessions in the United States are also not uncommon. Since the end of World War II, the United States has had one recession approximately every five years. Recessions have traditionally presented long-term investors with attractive purchasing opportunities, even though they may cause Americans to lose their jobs and put them in various situations of financial difficulty. The bottom of the market is often achieved in the stock market a few months before the beginning of a recession. What invest Investors are at their most pessimistic. But timing a market bottom precisely may be exceedingly challenging for investors. However, certain stocks have had a history of doing pretty well during economic downturns. For instance, the share prices of Target, Walmart, and Home Depot all dramatically outperformed the S&P 500 index during the recessions of both 2008 and 2020. If you want to know more and learn about recession-proof investments, investment opportunities during a recession, or how to survive a recession, I have videos about it on my channel. Please feel free to take a look at them if you like. The financial conditions will tighten further. Consumer sentiment is souring. Energy and food supply distortions have worsened and the global growth outlook has deteriorated. So, what should you do for the rest of 22? Experts agree that it's likely to be a bumpy road ahead for the remaining months of 2022. But crash or no crash, 
recession or not, history has shown us over and again that this is a normal part of history. First tip is to remember that volatility is normal, so enjoy the ride. It's difficult to forecast what will happen in the next six months, but analysts believe that market volatility is to be anticipated for the time being. Also, as the market shifts and flows in the coming months, experts believe that it's better to hold on to your assets and ride the wave. You should maintain your sight on the long-term investing goal and avoid panicking when things go wrong. The best way to combat inflation is to invest. Investing your money is essential since inflation drives up the price of necessities. As a rule, the stock market returns 10% annually. This year's inflation rate is about 9% the highest in 40 years. Investing and maintaining a varied portfolio is the best way to protect your wealth against inflation. Whatever you do, invest early and often, especially if you have a long investment timeline. Dips and crashes will happen, and so will other scary-sounding things like economic bubbles, bear markets, corrections, death crosses, and recessions. Invest in discount stocks and hang on to them. Financial advisors say to stay on course and attempt to keep your emotions in check. It would be unwise to sell your holdings at a loss today and the hopes of reinvesting the proceeds when the stock prices recover. If you can maintain your discipline and keep your investments, you will be in a far stronger position to profit from the market's eventual recovery. Moreover, it's essential to have a diversified portfolio. Generally speaking, diversified long-term portfolios will outperform shorter-term ones. When you diversify your stock portfolio, you buy shares in businesses across a broad range of industries and markets. In this manner, if a single firm or market sector has a downturn, others may step in to help. To protect your wealth, experts advise putting your money into low-cost, broad market index funds. So to end this video, one last tip. Learn to plan ahead by setting goals and time horizon. Young people preparing for retirement shouldn't let market volatility scare them. Investors with a long enough time horizon to wait for the market to recover should be thankful for the opportunity to purchase stocks at a discount. However, if you are an older investor, now is the time to review your stock holdings and determine whether the degree of risk you are taking is reasonable, given your time horizon and investment objectives. If you believe you have gained anything from this video, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more information about finances. Leave a comment with your ideas in the comment section. Thank you for watching. We'll catch up with you at the next one.